Zir watched her siblings torn apart in gruesome fashion. Bosric saw his sister rot before his eyes. And Quedon, I'm sorry, not Quedon, Quedon is Vincent Clovis, faced a mysterious entity in the darkness by the name of Veronica. And now we move to the next member, the dwarf, Galdus. Galdus, the first thing you notice immediately is that all four members of the party that you walked in with drop off of your blind sense. And for the first time since you lost your sight, you feel truly alone. You feel no presence at your side. You feel no presence in front of you, behind you, or anywhere within your 60 feet. You can sense neither wall, nor tree, nor even the floor beneath your feet. Hello? The sound dies as it leaves your mouth, as if in this liminal space there is nothing for your voice to echo from. Then you do hear something. A very small, rhythmic, almost like the dropping of water. Tap. Tap in the distance. I'll start approaching it. I will grip my uh, hammer. Okay. And position my shield. Um, as you walk, another strange happening, something you haven't experienced in over 200 years. At the edge of your 60 feet of sense, you know that sight has left you. You remember this. You felt it. But you swear you can see a pinprick of light. I will produce flame and throw the flame in that direction. Okay. You ignite a flame in your hand, and as you look at it, you see your hand bathed in what appears to be white light. There's no color to the flame. Everything is black and white. It's grayscale, but you can see it. This isn't like your blind sense. You can see it. And as you throw the flame, a long open tunnel leading to a doorway. I will approach the doorway. Do I? I do. I did see a hallway, did I not? Mm hmm. So I'll walk slowly, uh, trepidatiously down that hallway. Okay. And um, as you do, the tapping starts to get louder. I'll just keep approaching the uh, sound. Okay. Um, as you leave the doorway, um, you walk out into a city. But again, there's no color. It's black and white, and everything looks... It almost looks like the concept sketch of a city. Not something fully built or realized. Something in the process of being made. And leaned up against the wall, you see a tall woman of indiscriminate species and race. She's beautiful. But beautiful not in any unique feature, just in the way that if someone were to 
to tell AI to describe a beautiful woman. I'll, and you go ahead. I'll say I'll look around at this. <clears throat> I guess the best effort artist sketch. And I'll just pull out one of my cigars, put it in my mouth, ignite it and go, oh, we're not even going to try, are we? You say that, but then a thought comes to your mind. Isn't this just the way the world is? Yeah. You remember this is what the world looks like. After all, this is what you've been seeing for the last 200 years, grayscale. Color isn't real, that's something people made up to mess with you. Corey was always pulling jokes. And you recognize this tall woman as Corey. And it's weird that you didn't recognize her before. Because you always thought she was a Goliath, but no, she was just this tall, indiscriminate, conventionally beautiful woman. What are you and doing? And the tapping is coming from her foot as she leans against the wall. And she says to you in an even voice, well, it's about time. We've been waiting for you for an hour. And as you look around, you see two figures in plate armor with their helms pulled down over their face. And a smaller man with a bandana wrapped around his face. And you can just see two bright, pupilless, glowing eyes. What's wrong with them? We've been waiting. Are you ready to go? The matron's not going to wait forever. Why didn't you light the hallway? Because it's not our job. You're the forge master. A forge? I'm not the goddamn innkeeper. Well, then take it up with the goddamn innkeeper. Come on, let's go. And Corey lifts herself off the wall and starts walking in the direction of what you assume to be the gates of the city. Um, the smaller of the two armored figures puts a hand on your shoulder and says, don't mind, Corey, she's in a mood. And you recognize this as the artificer from your party in his mechanical armor. How long am I going to have to put up with it? <laughs> She brought me. I didn't have to be here. She'll be fine. You know how Corey gets. Yeah, she's usually a lot more lighthearted and not a bitch. Hey, uh, Gallus. And you feel his hands tighten on your shoulder. And then you hear a crack, and as you look over, you can see a crack appearing in the front of his armor, and a piece of the faceplate falls away, and you see another pupilless eye with tears of blood. The only color you can see is the red coming out of his eye. Why did you leave, Galnus? And Galnus, you are going to take... As soon as everything gets pulled up, apologies. Roll 20 is deciding to be slow and stupid. Uh, 17 psychic damage as this image burns itself into your mind. I'll recoil and be like, because you sent me away? We did send you, Galnus. And now the voices are coming from all around you. We never sent you. You ran. Corey tried to protect you, and you abandoned us. And they're all converging on you, and you hear, at the edge of your hearing, laughter. I will swing my weapon in an arc. I did not run. 
Um, you connect with the taller of the armored figures, and he crumples like glass and shatters as your hammer goes through. Can you please roll for me a wisdom saving throw? Plus 24. Okay. Um... You, uh, as he shatters, shards of glass splash into your face, and you take 22 more psychic damage. All right. Um, and then the shards of glass are burning in your face, and as you look over to where Corey was walking, she is on the ground with a dagger in her back, and the laughter is getting louder. And you just hear... (laughs) Oh, the pitiful little things you have sent to me. I apologize for the cityscape, but you're new. I didn't have a whole lot of time to craft the prison for you. I hope you do not mind, Iron Sight. I have always wanted to meet someone like you. The city fades, and you are in darkness again. Well, next time try a little harder. If you've waited so long, figured somebody might try. Oh, but I don't need to try with you. After all, the tall one is suffering so much worse. And the one you tried to kill? She's mine now. But I know you don't care about that. All you care about is your precious Cory. No. Wouldn't you like to see her again? Cory died. I'll see her again one day. Come now, Gallus. You have been here for over two centuries. You really think that death is permanent in this place? Won't it be fun to find out? Wouldn't you like to? You feel heat headed towards your chest. Can you please roll another wisdom save for me? I'll be a 26. All right. Um, The vision fades. The heat fades. And you are in darkness again. If you're going to try to use fire, don't use it against one with it in their heart. But you don't generally know anything, do you? You have to study. Uh, And I'm not a book. The words die with no echo again as you are back in this liminal space. Um, But with that 26... You are able to resist the effects of the illusion, and your scene has ended. Now we move to the last member of our party. What was that you said about being in greater pain? (laughs) Queden, before we start, could you do me a favor and um, roll initiative for me? I will add you in. Okay. Oh, that's good luck. My my favorite D20 was 20, 20 side up. Oof. And I'll, I'll take that as the good graces I need for this. All right. So that'll be plus, I believe I'm a plus two. Yes. So that is 14. 14? Okay. Give me just one sec. Oh, not you. Right. All right. Okay. So, um, Quedon, you felt yourself being pulled into this dark space, and then nothing. 
But then, then I said, what happened? You jolt awake in the forest. The forest you left, Twilight. And as you look to your left, you see a young Silvari man. Kind of sitting a little bit away from you with a feared look on his face and you recognize Vars. Question, am I myself or is this a, like, do I believe that this is the time that this is? Um, you are yourself in Twilight with Vars. Everything before must have just been a nightmare. Bars, what? Uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit out of it. I I thought I was. I thought I was somewhere else. I, <laughs> yeah, no, you were uh, you were having one hell of a dream there. But then again, heaven be far be it from you to not do everything dramatic, huh? Excuse you, will you ever, for one single moment, not just be on my ass about... Anyway, um, it's, uh, it's, it's good to be here, it's a nice day, sorry, I was, I was, yeah, I was the really out of it. What are you dreaming it. about, weirdo? It's never I'm... good to be in Twilight. Okay. Forgive me, the... Yeah, I was dreaming about something a heck of a lot worse, okay? You know Obviously. I'm, I'm, I try to be an optimist. Hey, let's go outside. Yeah. We're, we're at a clearing in the trees, and there's supposed to be a full moon tonight. Ooh. <laughs> now that is gorgeous. You hear a grunt at your side and a crack. Yeah, it is. And another deep growl and another crack. Hey. Wait. Wait a minute. Oh my god. What was I thinking? <laughs> the, the moon. No, no. It, it is, As it you turn, Vars leaps at you and sinks his teeth into your neck. Uh, you will take 19 psychic damage. Okay. But you are able to push him away. Okay. Nineteen heard. Um, there's, I mean, there's nothing around, there's, what do I have on me? I, I don't, I, I'm not attacking him, I'm just backing away, I just want to arm myself, I, uh, um, I don't see any. Bars looks up at you, in that half-transformed state, one of his eyes, the bright yellow of a wolf, the other one, the eye you remember, the eyes of the man that you care about, crying. I'm so sorry. I thought, I thought we could, I thought he, I, I could, please. He reaches up to his face and as he pulls his fingers down, you can see his nails dig in as he tears the skin the elvish skin away from his face and the fur of his hybrid form begins to appear underneath it. You lied, Raiden. You 
gave your heart to me, and then you gave it away! Roll a wisdom save, please. I will. Okay, not terrible, that's... That's 26. That's... That's my best skill, baby. Um... Okay. Um, as you feel this vision starting to fade, as you recognize, as you come to consciousness and realize that this is a dream, this has to be a dream, um, before you are able to snap yourself out of it, a hand reaches forward and grabs you by the throat and says, Who the fuck is Clovis? And then you break out of the dream. But you are in darkness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Me the so player that, is red as a tomato. That's hilarious. That is <laughs> the end of the nightmare sequence. Oh. Clovis. Oh. I'm sorry. No. Continue. Can you roll a perception check for me, please? Yeah. Um, that's a perception, 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 uh, 19. All right. Clovis, you feel more than see. You hear clanking of metallic armor behind you of someone in distress, and suddenly the darkness around you clears for just a moment. I am going to now reveal an area of the map. And then I'm going to switch you to the map because you're not on it right now. Yeah. All right, there should be an area revealed of the map now. Oh boy. Um, oh, there it is. Right. It is yes. in the upper left corner for our August technical fellow. Um, and as the darkness clears, you see, lying on the ground behind you, Galnus, Bosric, and Zir. Asleep. I fucking knew it. Um, okay. Uh, is there any sign of Veronica still in the room? Uh -uh. I'm but still, you, like, covered uh... in, in, like... I'm I'm weary from however long this this has been happening, being put on the surprise defensive. Uh, so Clovis is still in like his uh, sort of Roman centurion uh, battle stance, and is he he sort of tries to back up towards them uh, to get a better idea. All right, um, you can see no visible wounds on any of them. However, as you look down at your chest, there are three scratch marks across your chest. Okay. You have taken physical damage from something. Mm -hmm. Do I appear... To, they they don't appear to have taken physical damage. Just no, me. but okay. you can see uh, like blood leaking out of their nose Got a it. little bit. All right. Um, hmm. And you realize that you have been in the house maybe 30 seconds. Everything that happened in the last session and this session happened in the span of 30 seconds as the strange time of dreams being. Okay. Uh, I think still shield up, because Clovis still very much is like hostile territory mode. Uh, I think he's going to take the butt of his spear and try and shake everyone, like probably like poke into their boots okay. um, and try and jostle them awake. Um, Galnus and Bosric, you um, 
you awaken Clovis, no matter how you try. Zir is breathing. Zir is alive. Zir can't be woken. Okay. Uh, I think the, the two of you, as you get up, Clovis is probably still just like thinking that it's not working, still just trying to shake Zir awake. Um, we are in initiative, so I will go in initiative order. Hmm. This is happening in combat. Gotcha. Um, all of you now, you, you are awake. I will allow before your turn you to be awoken. You hear another... <laughs> my, 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 I hope you enjoyed your little slumber time and the nightmares I prepared for you. Oh, there is so much more. The furball is of particular interest to me. But you, Clovis... You have been naughty. Clovis, I need you to make a wisdom save for me. Okay. Uh, um, uh, You're not within ten feet of me. If he's poking, if he's poking Zier's toe, then he should be. Yeah, he would be. I think oh. like here now. Congratulations, yeah, you are. Moved down. Yeah. And uh, is this a charm effect? Uh, it is not a charm effect. Okay. Uh, then in that case, wisdom uh, is plus eight. And how much do I add from Paladin Aura? Five. Five. Nice. Uh, six, 15, uh, that's uh, 19. Okay. Um, you take 49 psychic damage. I wish I didn't. And you feel... You can't, for the life of you, remember the last book you read. Uh, uh, for reference, I am unconscious now. Okay. Um, so you hit the ground, but you feel memory leave your body. Okay. You now, and I need you to write this somewhere, you uh, must roll a d4 and subtract the number from all ability checks and attack rolls. Until I tell you otherwise. Um, where's a good, where's a good place to write this? Right here, probably. Uh, D four from ability checks and attack rolls. You said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that is her entire turn to do that ability. So. Uh, that will bring us to Bosric. Uh, you wake up to see S Clovis suddenly go, like, stock and then collapse. I will administer the potion of greater healing. All right. So that's how much? Uh, the potion of greater healing is 4d4 plus 8. Um, 19. Okay. All right. Uh, Clovis, you are now conscious with 19 hit points. Oh. Oh. Balzark, thank God. You're awake. This place is terrible. Um, all right. Balzark, do you have a bonus action? Um... No, I'll just draw draw weapons and wait. Okay. If an if an if an enemy comes within a uh, range of an attack. Okay. I'll hold, um, I'll hold my action for that. Well, say can I say I use my movement action to help Clovis? No, administering okay. a potion is an action. Okay. Well, all right. Um, then I will just draw my sword and wait. Okay. Um, all of you here, except Quedon, unfortunately, hear the clacking of, um, wood again, which none of you recognize as a problem, but Clovis, you remember what happened the last time you heard that <laughs> of clicking wood, um, and 
all three of you see for a split second something jump out of the shadows at Bosric. Um, that will be a hit. Bosric, you take 20 psychic damage and you feel three blades rake across your back. And you see in that split second what appears to be a marionette puppet with long bladed fingers and a sickening smile that cackles at you before disappearing back into the shadows. How much damage? 20. Okay, I'm down to exactly 40. All right. Galnus. Oh. First thing I'll ask, uh, what do I sense in the area? Um... You sense the marionette disappearing onto this shelf. Hold on, I'll um, scroll out. I don't see where you're pinging. Okay. Uh, and sort of hiding behind it, almost like a child playing hide and seek. Um, you don't see anything attached to this doll. Um, you can see the layout of this room. Um, And you can see the animus of Zir is very, very faint. Do I only sense the one marionette? Um, actually, you sense dozens of marionettes within 60 feet of you. None of them have an animus as strong as the one that is hiding. But there are dolls all around you. Keep her safe. And I will then see that, you'll see that flame shimmer kind of go over his armor as I cast Shield of Faith. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll say, we are surrounded. And I'll take a uh, defensive action. Okay. Um, you hear that laugh again that echoes kind of from everywhere. And a voice says, We, oui, you are surrounded, but then again, you did walk into my home. Um, and flying from a distance just outside your range of vision, Galnus, um, you see the faint animus of something moving as it collides with your chest three times. Uh, you take 12 force damage as you are hit by three magic missiles. How much damage you say? 12. I'm sorry, nine. Nine force damage as you are hit by three magic missiles. Um, all right. I'll say it'd be a shame if I burned it down. You are welcome to try. Quedon, you are in pitch darkness, and as you awaken and try to move, your hands and feet are bound. Um, you can make out movement in the darkness... Um, there's something purple moving through the darkness that doesn't quite match the blackness of the room. And you hear a voice say, Oh, good, you're awake. I hope you enjoyed your time in Zambia End. Did you have a nice rest? Did you enjoy seeing Vaz again? Who are you? Where am I? Where am I really? You are in my toy box. And you know who I am. I am Lisabeth Nalusia, firstborn of the betrayal Shoatan. <laughs> At what point will you be done with your games? 
and I can see my friends again. I will fight for it if I have to. But I don't. But just play like a little hide and seek. Stop being so melodramatic. After all. Melodramatic. After what you. After the games you just played in my own head. All I did was open the door, Quedon. After all, my friends are so excited to meet you, and you hear a clicking of wood, and you feel small hands on your legs and your chest as marionettes begin to pull themselves up on your body. And one of them lifts a dagger and tries to drive it into your chest. Um that is going to hit, you will take 11 slashing damage. Understood. Is... All right, that brings us to the top of the lineup, which would be Zir, but Zir is in a coma. Clovis. Don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> um... Chat, I want you all to know this was my favorite part of this campaign to design. Um, hmm. I think uh, Clovis is going to see Galnus step forward and, and hear him uh, ask that, that we protect Zir. Uh, and I think he's going to say, all right, <clears throat> Uh, and he's going to begin a, a chant under his breath to himself um, and cast a spell that I was just looking at that I scrolled past. Um, which spell would it be, do you think? Which one, which one do you think I was looking at? Uh, probably uh, Guiding Bolt. You're trying to shoot Zir so that she just dies and then you don't have to worry about her anymore? Yeah, that was it. No, uh, I am <laughs> casting... Uh, under under his breath, Clovis will utter again, as he tried to before we walked in here, a tower in the heart, a tower in the mind, Stendar, um, to cast Intellect Fortress on himself. Okay, give me uh, just one second. Yeah. I'm going to see if she's going to let you do that. Uh, it's going to be at third level. Uh, yeah, I don't think she wants you to do that. Uh, didn't he already have one up and during their last conversation she let him have one? Uh -uh. He cast it at third and fourth level and both were counterspelled, as is this one. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on. I think I think uh, Boz is right because I have two third level spells marked before casting this. I distinctly recall her saying, you know what, I'll let you have that one. Uh, it's fine. Um, she burned a spell slot. I'm happy with that. Um, and then I'm going to... Uh, it's a bonus action to administer a potion to yourself, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, then I am going to drink the potion of healing that I have. All right. 2d4 plus 4. Let's get some fours in there. I get some fours in the chat. Because uh, I didn't get them on my dice. Uh, plus four plus. Uh, so big fat eight hit points back. All right. Um, oh, and uh, clarifying question. When I go unconscious, does my spore power drop? Um, yes. Okay. Good to know. All right. Um, she has used her three legendary actions, so she does not have any more. Uh, and it is now her turn. Um, let's see if she gets her Siphon Dreams ability back. She does, on a six. Uh, 
but I don't think that's what she wants to do. I think she... That she wants to run away in terror? <sighs> Maybe. Um, she is going to... Um, you see three things emerging from the darkness ahead of you. A single moat of flame. A skeletal hand. And, um... Galnus, you notice that marionette moving again with its... It, start, it goes down on all fours and is running on its claw fingers, and it leaps at Bosric. Um, the hand... The skeletal hand heads towards you, Galnus, and the firebolt heads towards you, Clovis. So I will do them in the order I see you here. So Galnus against you, uh, 23 to hit, I don't believe hits Galnus. No, it does All right. not. All right. Um, then Bosric, a... 23 to hit as well with the marionette. All right, 19 psychic damage. Um, 21 hit points left. And Clovis, a 32 to hit with Firebolt. Oh, uh, yeah. There's uh, no way I could even make that not hit. 20 fire damage. Okay. Um, luckily, because I, even though she did counterspell it, I did successfully cast an abjuration spell. I actually mm -hmm. remembered this time that I can get temporary uh, health when I do that for my mm -hmm. abjuration ward. It does uh, count as a cast. Yes. We don't use magic rules in this house. <laughs> um, so that's, that, that did still eat through most of it, unfortunately. Um, um but that is her turn. That is all she can do. And I assure you, that is better than her sucking the dreams out of one of your heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all she can do. <laughs> that's it. Wow. Really low, low balling us here, Dreadmaster. Bosric, you're up. So, did the, so the marionette attacked and retreated? Uh -huh. Did I see this happen? Yes. Did I get an attack of opportunity? It's not a creature. It's a weapon that mm. she is wielding. So it doesn't have hit points? Nope. So it cannot be destroyed? It can be destroyed if you can find it. Okay. Um, so and its right. animus doesn't move to one of the others. Hmm. I'll look, I'll look to to um, where to go. That's to uh, that's to Galnus. Uh, Galnus, you uh, saw the marionette as it retreated. Um, is now behind this podium. Hold on, I have to zoom out so. Uh, you assume, because it was headed in this direction, that it is behind this podium. I will point in that direction and say, out of my line of sight. It's too far. What do we do now? We can't just stand here. Break the others. Are there others? Are there others? Where? It's can, just, uh, we only have six seconds. I can only say so yeah, much. That's true. There, yeah, you're, we are running out of six seconds. But you can see now that it is lit up, you are surrounded by broken wooden dolls. They are everywhere. Where's the closest? Uh, here. I don't, I can't, though. You also see that there are doors. Um, here, I'll reveal more of the, uh, 
more of the area here. Because you can actually see a good chunk of this house now. Uh, the one thing you do not see is a door out. You see doors into other rooms, but it seems like you are in a room with no doors to the outside. Hmm. Queen and you are in darkness. All right, I will just... Um... Drink the potion of superior healing, which is how much? Uh, that is 8d4 plus 16. Thirty-five, and then I will um, hold my attack for the next time one of those things comes close. Okay, um, because I don't want you to waste an action, and we are in a very like deep thing. That probably won't work. All right. So there's literally no way to stop these things. Damn. I'm sure there's a way to stop them. You just... It's not that. Mm. All right. It's like saying, last... I'll attack your sword. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, then, all right. Then, all right. My last, then, my last thing I'll say to Clovis, your spirit guardians. Maybe they can... Mitigate some damage or something. Worth a try. We need to move. And that'll be that. Alright. Uh, you hear a voice say, Lee, you do need to move. I cannot believe you are just standing around like this. You're boring me. I'm making it harder. And you hear a snap. Uh, Bosric... I need you to roll for me a charisma save with disadvantage, because I still haven't been making you make this save with disadvantage, so this one you're gonna. Charisma save with disadvantage. And one of my worst stats. You are within 10 feet of me, so you get plus 5. It doesn't matter, I rolled a 1. Okay, um... So, Bosric turns to you and says, your spirit god is, you can mitigate some of the damage, it's... Can I, can I spend my inspiration to negate? Well, no, I can't. You can spend your, ins your inspiration to negate an at one, yeah. Oh, then I will. Okay. Um, which then becomes 15 plus 5 plus 1. Okay. <clears throat> Still gone? Yep. Uh, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bosric is banished. I'm sorry. No. Um, Bosnick, you are not banished because she can't do that. <laughs> uh, so instead, um, nothing happens because that ability you actually would save from with what you rolled. So never mind. Moving on. Galnus. Uh, Nothing if not fair. If I see a mistake that I made, I'll call myself on it. Just remember to keep her safe. I'm going to walk over to the marionette you told me was... Uh, is there a marionette over in this direction? Uh, there's a dozen marionettes in that direction. There's six I, or seven. Okay. I'm going to approach them. Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. Why can't I move my token? I uh, uh, Probably because I dragged it out. Uh, 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 nope. Uh, one more time. Okay, never mind. Um, maybe I won't move. That's a good spot for me. Um, uh, nope. <laughs> I have now given you control of it. You should be able to move it now. I'm going to walk over here. Um, for that matter, only only uh, Queden is visible to me on turn order. 
That's okay. And I will pick one of them up in a manner that like kind of keeps it from overly moving. And in that hand, I will cast Produce Flame. Okay. And go, this hallway's so dark, I need some light if I'm going to walk around. And I'm going okay. to set it on fire and use it as a torch. Okay. Um, it is not made of flammable material. It is not. Okay. So uh, you produce flame and uh, its eyes catch on fire. And you get maybe like a 10 foot sphere of light. Um, so its eyes are on fire? Yes. I will drop it into the pile with the rest of them <laughs> and okay. be like, oh no, they're blind. And, <laughs> and I will start to walk three and start to head more towards the middle of the room. Okay. Do a quick. That stupid thing. Um, okay, so now where I am now, I have full vision of the room. Do I sense anything? Because you said I saw something move on the outskirts uh -huh. that evaded my vision. Do I see anything now? Um, you can sense the animuses of all of the marionettes in this room. Okay. Question. Do I hear the sizzling of other eyes? No. Damn. So sad. Uh, with my bonus action, I'll take my greater. Okay. Potion. Um, I, what is that? Um, 44 plus 8. 4 plus 8. 8. 11. 15. 60. Oh, you said it was 4d4? 4d4, correct. 19. Okay. And I will get 19 hit points. Okay. Um, she, uh, for her second legendary action, um, is going to say, let's see what's going on in that head of yours. Uh, Bosric, can you please roll for me a wisdom save? No longer within range of the uh, aura. At disadvantage? At disadvantage, correct. You got me. Alright. Um, you will take 23 psychic damage as you feel your lungs and throat filling with water. And at 23 life. Everyone who can see Bosric sees him clawing at his mouth and throat, making the sounds of a drowning person. Um, Galnus, you don't see anything except Bosric writhing. Clovis, you see water pouring out of Bosric's mouth. When I find this woman. Uh, Quita. You are bound yeah. and covered in tiny marionettes. I can't do much. Um, but I think I'm going to protect myself as much as I can from these marionettes doing damage. Okay. So I'm going to get my shield of faith myself. All right. And that's a bonus action. It is. I am back. Can I use an action to try and get out of the the? I'm bound with rope. Mm, you're bound with something, and you can absolutely make an attempt to get out of it. I'm. I don't know where I'd go because it's dark, but I'm gonna try. Uh, roll athletics or acrobatics. Okay. Your I'm, choice. I'm looking at which is the number I like better. <laughs> They're both the same. That is an 11. Um, all right. Uh, you strain and you pull, but unfortunately, you only succeed in making a lot of noise. However, uh -huh. you do make a lot of noise. Ooh. Can I have Gelnus 
Bosric, and when he comes back, Clovis, make a perception check for me. This is not my night. I'm above them. Um, perception? Perception. 13. I rolled like garbage. It's a 12. Okay. We'll see what happens when Clovis gets back. I, I am admittedly drowning in a thimbleful of water, so... I don't know that. I mean, to your mind, you're drowning in a river. Does it matter how much I'm... Does it matter where I'm drowning, so the fact that I'm drowning... Yes, so it does, because of your specific fears. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I'm going to do... You also things. feel a very slimy tendril around you, like, as if something is dragging you lower. Uh, when I find this woman, they're going to put a trigger warning on what I do to her. And Clovis, you want to roll a big old perception check for me to see if you hear uh, Queden thrashing in another room? Sure thing, boss. Um, I'm hella thrashing. Hmm. Perception. That is a uh, 16. Sorry, 17. All right. All right, even better. I'm DC was 15. Um, Clovis, you hear a crash been... behind this door. It's very uh... faint, but it is coming from behind that door. Okay. Um, is it my turn, or is it still someone? It is not your turn. It is still Queden's turn. Gotcha. Um, do I have the ability to use a reaction to just point my spear in that direction, or should I? Wait I'll allow that. Yeah. I'll, okay. allow, I'll allow that as a reaction. Uh, then yeah, at the sign, uh, Clovis will point his spear at that direction and go noise. Um. Okay. <laughs> I can't do anything else on my turn. That was my bonus action and action, so... No. Um, and the marionettes are going to keep uh, dismantling you. Don't like that term. That's what they're doing. <laughs> uh, dirty 20 to hit. That... <laughs> it hits through the shield? Yes, it does. Okay. It does hits through the shield. Uh, 13 slashing. Okay. Um, I try. Try my best. And that will bring us to the top of the lineup with Clovis. Yeah. Um, it sure does. And the amount of options and things that I have to do uh, has finally changed, actually. Um, but Bosric is in trouble. So I can't I can't leave Bosric to defend Zir. Clovis doesn't think he can leave Bosric to defend Zir. Um, hmm. 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 Running out of... I did not mean to press that button. Um, so, honestly... That may be actually what I do. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, what what is what is is Galnus surrounded by dolls right now? Uh, no, not really. Okay. I mean, they're they he threw the doll down. So, but is there a doll within arm's reach of Galnus? Yes. Okay. Uh, then in that case, um. I am going to cast, because I believe this is the way that these work together. Uh, oh, no, okay. It has to be that ally. Are there dolls around me? Um, yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. They're kind of just strewn about. <laughs> um, then I am going to cast uh, at second level. I'm going to cast Aid on Bosric. Okay. Uh, which, oh, I can choose three creatures. Okay. Uh, then I will choose myself, Galnus, and Bosric to all increase our hit point maximum and current hit points by five. Nice. Um, and then, uh, because I was able to, uh, um, because I was able to target all of us, uh, I am going to target Galnus with my Voice of Authority speed, uh, feature since I cast a spell. Uh, so Galnus, little uh, 
sort of holographic image of Stendar will appear uh, near you, and it's going to uh, look down and with a little miniature pillar in its hand indicate at the doll, just give it a shot. Maybe smacking it'll work. Um, I wouldn't see the hologram. <laughs> it's god magic. I think you'd get some. You, you'd hear the voice and understand. You, you'd feel the intent. We'll say that. Okay. Because it's god magic. God magic. Some little, some little orb. <laughs> um, okay, I'll just spin my hammer and just drop it right on this. Uh, not drop it, but I'm going to bring it down harshly on this marionette. Uh, the doll uh, comes apart like a crash dummy. When you hit it in the chest, the arms just boom, just pop out from the sockets and the legs pop out from the sockets. The head pops off and there's a click of um, a click of wood and you see the animus in that doll die. That one's gone. Uh, excellent. Um, is there... Bosric still seem to be under the effect of this, uh, this vision. Water still pouring out of the mouth. <laughs> okay. Um, it only lasted a moment. Gotcha. Uh, then I'm going to like just reach a hand and kind of shake Bosric to try and uh, bring him back like into the moment. Uh, but I don't have time to say anything because I'm going to uh, move... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, towards that door. Uh, okay. And, uh, yeah, shield forward uh, with spear. I'm just going to call to the other two. Don't know what's going on in here, but if we can find Queden, we can get out. All right. Uh, and that's my turn. All right, that will bring us to Lizabeth's turn. Um, the upper room goes eerily silent, as if Lizabeth's attention is elsewhere. Unfortunately, Lizabeth's attention is on Quedon. So, Quedon, um, you hear another, like, <laughs> All right, all right, no more playing doctor. Quedon, I have to be honest with you. You are my favorite of all of the adventures that have come into my house. You have the juiciest fears and anxieties. So I'd like to give you a gift. Ooh. I'm going to take one away. Could you please roll for me a wisdom save with disadvantage? But my trauma makes me me. With disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, still not great, or still not bad. Uh, it's a 22, baby. All right, you feel, uh, you feel something pulling at the edge of your intellect. But whether for becoming used to your trauma or just not wanting someone rooting around in your mind, you are able to resist, and you take 33 psychic damage halved to 16. Oh. And your I... intellect is not drained. Great. I say... My life is mine, and it has made me the man I am today. Don't you dare. Mm -hmm. Fun now. Bosric, you're up. Uh, could you kindly point to the door where that was uh, indicated? Yes, it is this green metallic one here. Sweet. I will bonus action this step. Okay. All right, teleport 30 feet. I will walk to the door and open it. Okay. Um, you see Orthopedic. through the... Uh, yeah, no, no problem. Uh, you see through the door a large greenhouse um, where there are various psychotropic and healing plants growing. Um, it seems like this was like a doctor's pharmaceutical greenhouse. And in the corner, you see a staircase leading down into darkness. Um, I will relay that to everyone. Uh, 
All right. And I still have 15 feet and an action. Unless opening the door was my action. I'm going to say it's free object interaction. Cool. Then, are there any um, marionettes in there? Nope. Then I will actually take a few steps inside. All right. And probably die, <laughs> but whatever. Um, all right. Um, She is going to use her legendary action. Um, Galnus, you see the animus of the larger marionette activate and flare up and come running towards you as uh, Veronica leaps up and tries to make an attack at you. Uh, 27. I will cast shield. Um, okay, she will counter it. Uh, then it will hit. All right, that will be uh, 20 psychic damage as in the last second you see the animus manifest into this creature and it slashes at you and then vanishes from your sight. <clears throat> you are burning out our spell slots. Oof, I am scared for when you actually find her. <laughs> you should be. All right. Galnus, you're up. Well, looking around at the different animus and the fact that Bosrek has flipped off to the other room with uh, Clovis, looks like he's uh, following in pursuit. Um, I'll return back to... Um... I thought we were looking for Queen. Yep. No, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. I'm going to protect Zir. So I'll move back to Zir and... Mm -hmm. I will say out loud, I guess somebody should watch her. Just remember, fear is meant to be overcome. And I will take, uh, I will put my hand on my chest and I will cast Lay on Hands on myself for my full 45. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Lisabeth is going to use her last legendary action. Oh, wait, she has two legendary actions left. Uh, she's going to use a legendary action. Bosric, can you please make another wisdom save with disadvantage? No, I find myself physically incapable of... Yes, I can make it. God damn it. Uh, you can choose to fail. That's fine with me. Um, I will spend a luck point. Okay. Mm, stop being stupid. Okay. Uh, that will be like a 10. Okay. Um, thankfully, this isn't too much damage. Uh, you hear uh, a hiss and a rustle in the trees, and um, a venomous snake lashes out and bites your neck. Um, and then is suddenly a tree branch again. You take 15 psychic damage. Down to 13. Quedon. Yeah. You're up. And I'm still... Still bound. Have you tried breaking free? He has. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's how you guys found him. Okay. Soren flying... Uh, and I, I can hear nothing, so I can't hear that they're trying to look for me. 
or like anything uh, that's going on around no. where I am? Ah, uh, no. Okay. Um, I'm. I mean, I'm just gonna try it again, and okay. I think. I mean, I've already boosted myself. I don't think there's any point in hurting this thing. Okay. Uh. So yeah. Ooh, that is gonna be. That's a nineteen. Okay. Um, with a, you are still bound. Like your hands are, your arms are still manacled, but there are now mm -hmm. chunks of wood hanging from your body or your arm where you have just torn the manacles off of that fucking rule. The board you were restrained on. All right. Um. And you guys yeah. up front, I'm not even gonna make you roll perception. With the door open, all of you hear that cracking of the wood. Yeah. Drop a fucking hard ass line and then break open from a chair. So I wait. So the door is open, so I can see uh, them. You I'm can't confused. see anything. I they could so hear I'm you, in though. darkness. They yeah. can hear me. Okay. Yes. Um, wolves crucially do not have dark vision. Also, this is magical darkness, and it wouldn't. Well, yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah. But I'm saying, like, this is one of the rare, the rare instances where you have a player who, oh, the dark matters. Honestly, I think I just like. I'm not anywhere on this. Okay. Yeah, um, you're not on the map. Great. I. I don't want to be like too careless, but I genuinely do think I just like try to like, not run, but like at a pretty fast pace, just, like, try to find a wall, try to find something. Okay. Uh, just, I think I'm just gonna pick a direction, make it left of the chair I was facing. Um, the direction I was facing in the chair. Bosser just disappeared into the ether. That was actually really <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's, that's quite good. <laughs> Could I get a sense of, like, I don't know, the dimensions of the room, or, or like... Um, the room feels endless. I do not As if you walk. are, okay. again, trapped in a liminal space. So I take my full movement, just walking left. Great. <laughs> uh, cool. I just, I yell out, I'm like... <laughs> Friends! <laughs> Anybody? Wherever you are, help! Uh, not knowing what the heck else to do. They, she already toyed with me. If she's, she wants to be a. I think she knows exactly where I am. Might as well call other people to my attention. All right. Um. um that you guys do not hear. Play. Uh, and as you call out, you actually do hear her voice say, Now that is cheating. I guess that means the game is over. One point for me. Is that because I cheated? You don't hear anything uh, else. Yeah. Uh, I'm lost. And I think that's the end of my turn. I All did right. a movement, I did an action. Um, she will use her last legendary action. Um, Clovis, can you please make a wisdom save with disadvantage? Okay. Uh oh. Uh, I'm neck. I'm not feeling very neck right now. Uh, that is uh, an eleven. Okay. Um, with a plus eight, folks. Oof. Uh, you take 20 psychic damage as you <laughs> look down and your armor corrodes on your body. And the protection of the Bastion that you have come to rely on starts to fail. And as you look at the shield that you took that was given to you by your temple, it shatters. And for a moment, the fear takes you, and then you shake your head, and the shield is back. Okay. And that will bring us to your turn. 
Excellent. Um, that <laughs> great. I'm gonna punch this bitch. <laughs> uh, well, not quite. Um, that. I don't have that spell anymore. Wow. Why would I get rid of that spell? Um. Uh, yeah, I'll still do this. Um, that begins to start to uh, send Clovis into uh, like more major, less magical, and more just like mental, uh, like full on panic. Uh, so he is going to cast um, Aura of Purity uh, and a 30 foot radius springs out uh, from around him, which I believe. Uh, everyone is... That'll touch everybody, yeah. Yeah. Nice! Um, Yeah, and so, uh... Each non-hostile creature in the aura can't become diseased, has resistance to poison damage, and has advantage on saving throws against effects that cause any of the following conditions. Blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, and stunned. Galvis, you're cured. (laughs) If only it was that easy. (laughs) If only... Um, uh, uh, and, uh, after casting this on himself and relaxing a little bit, uh, with the, the added bonus, uh, to his mental fortitude that it gives him, uh, he'll look at Galnus, uh, and say, I know that, uh, it would be best for us to stay here and protect her, but I don't know that Bosric is going to continue to live if he goes down there by himself. Uh, and then I will uh, move uh, 10, 15, 20 into the door frame. As okay. you say that, I'm going to respond and say, fine, anything that happens to her is on both of you. Um... Lisa Beth says, and all of you hear it, just it's sort of like an exasperated. Oh. I thought he would be so much more interesting opponents in this. How are you the ones that took down the Duchess? How are you the ones that killed the madam of the vampire house? You are utterly disappointing. Come closer and find out. Uh, Short legs, I'm not fast. The light brightens. Quedan, you find yourself in an operating room. A very small operating room, probably not 20 feet by 20 feet. There is a kind of flickering firelight that is being um, amplified by a piece of uh, tin behind it um, in a rudimentary sort of floodlight. Um, There's no one else in the room. You can see stairs leading out. Uh, I've got all my things on me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I go up and, the stairs. Well, it's not your turn yet. Uh, oh, no. Bosric. Oh, it's my turn. I thought you were going to hit me with something. No, no. No, she uh, she cast time stop and left. Hmm. Fun. <laughs> That's such a hilarious spell. So nothing else is nope. actively. Does anything up here change? Um, you're just in a house now. The aura appears to have left the house. Uh, Galnus, you notice that the Animus has left all of the dolls. I feel the need to say nothing, because I am alone. But we're still in initiative order? Yeah. Then, how far can I? Uh, if it would make a difference on whether or not you would say anything, I think uh, 
Yeah, I'm. I think I think we're both still in your aura. You are, but you're obviously in another room. I'm not gonna. He's not gonna yell. Okay. I'll move to there and kind of. Wait and see. Uh, you can see light uh, down the stairs that you couldn't see before. The sort of that flickering uh, ghost light. Hello down there! Queen, do you hear Bosric's voice? Oh. We're out of initiative. Boss. Oh my god, Boss. And I run up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, put my Queen shield in. down, or at least I'll put my shield on my back and then throw Zier over my shoulder. Okay. Uh, Queden, you run up the stairs, you see Bosric here, and uh, Clovis standing in the doorway. Uh, so here, I'll, I'll put you on the map. Boz and Clovis standing in the doorway? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, Bo Bosric um, is here by the tree. Clovis is up in the doorway. Gotcha. I, like, I go to Boz... Uh, you, Clovis, you would see me, like, look up at you, get, like, oddly really startled for a moment, and just, like, look down, uh, and I address, I, like, am addressing you both, but just, like, not looking at you in the eyes. What the hell just happened? Where, where is any we, of this? We need to leave, now. You don't have to tell me twice. Are you good to run? Lead the way. Excellent. Uh, and uh, Clovis will pop back. We'll actually take one of my potions. Um, okay. Let me make that Dallas, I, greater healing. I'm sure you noticed things seem to be different now, uh, and Quedon is here. I appreciate you telling me. I'm glad he's okay. I have Zir. Excellent. Um, does the door seem to be... Yes, there is a door now. Okay, it is awesome. right here. Maybe if it will let me click. That's three fours and a one. Heck yeah. That's a good potion. That's a good potion. Um, yeah, uh, and you know, you know fully that was a solid bulb for. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I'm going to go through it. Okay. You exit. <laughs> you exit into a clearing. Uh, Clovis will keep the door open and, and like wait for everyone to get out. I will okay. walk out with Zir at some point. Okay. Actually, considering that it's going to half your speed to carry her once Boss comes by, he'll take... Uh, no, he will not relinquish her to you. Really? He will not relinquish. He'll, he, if you try to, he'll say, you had your chance to assist her. I'll take care of this. Oh. As you wish. And with the rescue of Quedon, I think that might be a good place for us to take a quick break. When Lee left our group of adventurers, they were attempting to navigate the inner reaches of their own mind and contend with horrible manifestations of their own fears, terrifying puppets, and an unconscious satyr. They have escaped from the Nightmare House and find themselves on the front step in the falling snow-like spores. I will summon Goat! Go to summit. Um, as Goat um, approaches um, Goat Mez I will uh, gently put Zir on Goat and say uh, keep pace keep steady. You got it. 
you know, the joy of perspective is that now, after how terrifying that was, your goat's not so scary anymore. Even though he's still kind of weird. And I love him for it. Thanks. Oh, you have no idea how much it itches to have no skin. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you see me literally, you see me go like, I'm like, I'm crouching down. You see me go, hee hee hee. And then I, I like, <laughs> my, I go, hee hee. And then I just immediately address, yes. That was I just like immediately like the tiniest little tee like little moment and then I just immediately fixed my posture. I go. So the nightmares weren't just me. No, the uh apparently they were everyone. Well some fared better than others. And when I say that I'll just uh kind of motion towards goat and zir. Yeah. Queen, you now see a comatose seer. Coma, so there's nothing I can do with, with healing? I mean... You can try. Ob observing them. I have, I no have, one has tried to heal her yet. No one has tried to heal her. Okay, I will give her... I mean, does she look like physically... It's like she just looks like... The, she looks like, like she's the asleep. Blood, the blood is drained? Okay, just asleep. Okay. Um. Well... I wonder if if I can just do like just a general like medicine check, just because like I don't know if healing would. Ah, uh, yeah, roll medicine check. Hurt. Yeah, she... yeah, roll medicine. I mean, she's got blood pouring out of both of her nostrils, but oh, everyone well, uh, does. Yeah. You do too, actually. If you put your hand to your nose, you'd see that there's some black blood on your fingers. Okay. <laughs> I'm up. So I, I definitely have many uh many a cloth. A handkerchief in my uh and i just like give everybody a, like a black <laughs> like gold embossed little <laughs> queen just handing out napkins i love that <laughs> it's... i'm like i go into like mother heel mode okay that's a where is my sorry that is a 22. medicine check Ah, uh, she is asleep. Great. Ah, uh, can I? What's she's what's conscious? The... I mean, she has a pulse. Yeah. Um, How can I? I'm like, what's the least disrespectful way I can try to wake her up? <laughs> it was like uh, I question. think seeing you uh, study her, Clovis will say, I tried to wake her up. As I succeeded with Gamus and Bosric, but she just wouldn't come to. I'll note to you guys, I did pick her up, threw her over my shoulder, and then threw her over the back of Goat. I will also... <clears throat> so... <clears throat> oh my god. Remind you, Galnus, that in your nightmare, you heard Lizabeth say, one of them belongs to me now. Ah, oh, like, um, I don't think you'll be able to wake her up. She has a knack for being taken by these dukes. Uh, your um, giggling friend said that one of us belonged to her now. Whedon stands there. Something tells me that she meant Zir. Hmm. These nightmares that, that you two had, or well, you three, sorry, um, what were they like? The two of you were wounded when when I finally was able to see you. Uh, mine was an unfinished picture. Hmm. And that's the best description I can. She doesn't seem to know anything about my former companions, me, my life, my likes, my hopes, my dreams, nothing. Because it was hmm. kind of like what I would picture when you say Stendar, a city. It's a city, um, but it wasn't fleshed out. It wasn't very real. The individuals that were in it were not right. 
Interesting. And thinking back on it now, none of it was correct. There was not one thing about it that was truly representative of anything I've been through or dealt with. So what she can control is based on what she can find out. I don't know. All I know is that, like anything else, if you want to make someone believe something, you need to know as much as possible. Mm. And if what you've all said and what the uh, the doctor said, um, she got here after I was already in the clearing. So right. I'm an anomaly. I'm I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. To her, I, this is the first couple days that I've ever been in the Hamlet. We may be able to use that if we can figure out some. I was going to try, but my plan was changed. Mm -hmm. Thank you for stepping forward and, and looking after Zier. I did what was necessary. And I appreciate that. Um, for my part, she wasn't able to put me to sleep. So I didn't get a nightmare. I was just in that room with that puppet, which she called Veronica. Um, I think the Veronica may have just been an animus. Hmm. A life force. Hmm. Is that what you see when you see us? Yeah. Hmm. That's how I see you. Energy, beings, I don't... I can't paint a picture of you. But I can tell you when it's you. I can tell you when something's real. You're very real. Well, that's reassuring. Certainly didn't feel like it in there. Well, if you were in your own head, then you weren't. Hmm. Why don't we uh, continue this conversation on the road? I don't know when she'll be back, and I think it would be wise for us to get a little further away before I put up the tower. Yes. Hmm. That's a good call. I don't know what Do we know this is her home, or do we just know this is a house? Um, uh, <clears throat> Lady Thane indicated it as her manner. Mm -hmm. It's been some time since that happened, so it's okay that... I think uh, Herr Folger did as well mm -hmm. when we asked him where, where, um, like where, where she was. Knocking on the walls and the feeling that... What is this house made of? Uh, not to knock on the walls to feel it? Uh, it seems like it's made of wood. Yeah, I wanted to burn it down, but it didn't seem to... Even the uh, marionettes weren't uh, particularly flammable. Well, she's gone. Try again now. Is there any branches or anything nearby? Mm -hmm. I will pick up some, set them on fire, and put them in the home. Okay. Um... The fire burns in the middle of the house, but it doesn't catch on to anything else. Hmm. Hmm. Unfortunate. Yeah. Well, we can cross it off our list of things to try, at least. So don't have to waste time trying to figure that out. We should head back to wherever it is you'd all prefer. Hmm. I suppose we can go back to the... Um, general area, that big open plains near uh, Herr Folger's place. We seem to have passed his uh, you know, little test, so I imagine he wouldn't mind us keeping our distance and just getting out of the forest. She seems to have some sort of control over these trees as well. Are you sure? Or is it an illusion? Well, if what just happened to us in there is any indication, I think even if it is an illusion, 
the fact that she's in charge means it's still worth staying away from. I mean, I think you're the most level-headed of us all, but it still seems, based on that blood coming out of your nose, that whether or not she successfully tricked you, her power still hurts. And I do think that would probably resonate with Gelnus because you know you can yeah. identify when something's not real, and you couldn't with them. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's head to the clearing and we can think there. It's good enough. I'll stay back here with uh, Goat, make sure Zir uh, makes it there in one piece. She starts to show any signs of distress, then uh, we can deal with it as we move. Yeah, I haven't really taken my eyes off of her. I, I don't know what else I can do, but there are some your right, pendant. Could make. I suppose I if whatever she's dealing with is is trying to harm her, absolutely. Yes. Try putting uh, it around her neck. See if it'll help yeah. eventually. Uh, Clovis yeah. has it right now. Oh, I, oh, I don't right. know that. <laughs> the person. Uh, really no, I know. I'm uh, just reminding. The, I the also table. did forget. <laughs> so thank you oh. for that reminder. Uh, Clovis will uh, take it off and uh, put it around Zier's neck. Would Galnus like accept help from Quedon in like getting her are, are we getting her up on the goat? Are we She's already there. She she's on Yeah, the she's she's okay. like flumped over the back of the goat. Mm -hmm. Okay. She she was successfully fireman on the goat. I see. Um I think after putting that on, uh Clovis will look up uh and address Quedon. Do you think there's anything you can do to help us? Because I got beat to shit in there. Oh, regular healing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they did as uh, well. Yes. We're all kind of, we all kind of got beat to shit. Yeah. Um, I will use mending on my armor and just, I'm fine. Hmm. And if you do look at him, you'll see he has no wounds. Yeah. Uh, he, he will look at you and, and sort of give you one over. I need to learn how to do that. It's a limited time thing. I can only do so much. Hmm. You can do more of it than I can. You're not a healer. Yes. True, but if you cannot repair your wall, then no matter how grand it is, with enough time, it will fall. I don't know a lot about this city and these walls, but I do know that cement is a thing, and people can help you with that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do everything yourself. It's true. Look at Queen. Um, he was just, you know, captured. Probably beaten. We're gonna tortured. we're gonna rest after this, right, gang? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. then I can. I was trying. I will one hundred percent give you the opportunity to take a long rest. Thank well, God. I was, I was to gonna bury out. myself in the fucking ground if you didn't. <laughs> it escalated I rather quickly. Out masculine words, so I could <laughs> save on spell slots. But you can all get. Well, who needs one, two, three? Okay. Who looks the worst beaten? Uh, I think currently that is Boz. It's yeah, probably Bozric be Bozric. Probably looks, yeah. Bozric probably looks the most outwardly damaged. I think most uh, of the damage that Galnus and Clovis took was psychic. So and, they, and, uh, it, they, and if anyone cares, he's kind of off in his on his own in his own head. Just. Well, I have to put a hand on your shoulder in order to do cure wounds. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, and the minute your hand touches his shoulders, therapy is a contact sport. Hey, hey, I'm just, just making sure you're okay. I trust me. I don't know what you went. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's That's... okay. It's okay. I don't know what you went through in there, but it was obviously, well. She targeted the worst of us. So. Take whatever time you need. Whatever silence you need. And you get... 22. You get a fourth level cure wounds. And everybody else is getting my third levels. I'm up to 25. 
Uh, what did you say the rest of us got? Uh, I will roll that eminently. Okay. Do you just want me to roll once for both of them, or should I roll both? Let me roll both. And, and you know I would say, you, if you want mute, <laughs> do do not uh, waste any me? healing on Gallimus. Oh. He is literally at perfect health. <laughs> Oh, you said you're fine. Okay, slay. Then never yeah. mind. Um, that's 16 for you, Clovis. Excellent. And and that's it. Except for except for Zir. Um, suppose I'll just like. I th obviously, you know, in a coma, not dead, but like, I don't know. There's some similarities between like being in a coma and like the boundaries between life and death being in that stasis um, for sure, which is very much like what his whole thing with, with Syracuse is. Uh, so, um, roll. I'll give her a heal, but, like, primarily I want to, like, charge it with, like, a, like, under my breath mumbled prayer to Zarakis, um, okay. to just try to awake. Uh, the healing energy is absorbed by Zira's body, but it does not seem to shake her from the stupor. Okay, and that healing energy is... Oh, sorry, that was the wrong healing energy. Thank you. Okay. And we walk. And we walk. Is there a conversation we were going to have? I forget. Um, no, I'm just walking with Goat and Zir. If somebody talks to him, then they talk to him. But he's just... You all mentioned that you're concerned about the woods. He's monitoring the woods. I'm chill with the woods. Here's one. One's good with the woods. All right. Yeah, it's up to you guys if you want to talk. I know. Wait, uh... No, I'm just saying, like... I don't know if, like, I think Queen would have to be pressured into it, but, like, out of character, I gen <clears throat> I do think he you want to, you, oh, oh, uh, Clovis was, Clovis said, let's take the conversation of what happened to us in the dreams on the road. That's what it was. Yes. Queen's not going to say anything if he's not prompted. Um, <clears throat> so, sorry for that being a bit metagamey. I just remembered live. Apologies. You're chilling. Um, I think Clovis, I, <laughs> I think Clovis is too rattled for being yeah. in the woods to to go therapizing people. Um, so I don't I don't think he's going to say anything. It, are you acting in a scared manner? Like, are you like jumpy? Yes, he he isn't acting like afraid, but he's acting kind of paranoid. I will say I'll say this, Clovis. You have not I, again. I, I don't think he's made eye contact with you a single time since being found by everybody else, but I will go and, like, walk by you. <laughs> hmm. Just, like, with, you know, with the hand on the weapon. Just uh, um, For, for Galmus' sake, I think uh, the way that Clovis is moving is very, like, he's, like, in charge of himself, but anytime there's, like, a snap of a branch in the forest or, you know, any, like, ambient sounds, he does, like, sort of flinch in that direction. Uh, then I will uh, reach forward and put my hand on your arm, like, your, more your tricep or your your forearm. Um, when mm -hmm. I see you jumping, I'd be like, conquer your fear. He doesn't seem to be affected at all like when you grab him uh he seems like still like safe and comfortable with the party uh so he doesn't flinch at that and he looks over his shoulder and goes yeah yes and uh thank you and i will walk, leave my hand there one hand's on goat the other's on your arm and if there is a snap of a branch or anything and you start to kind of jump 
you feel my hand tense and it, it kind of stops you from jumping mm -hmm. as I hold your body kind of rigid to where you are because if you're trying to get away he's keeping you in that spot mm -hmm. he it doesn't ever seem like he's trying to like flee he just seems to be like he's like in fight or flight and it's like kicking fight every time that like anytime there's a noise he's like something to kill oh no it's okay we're just in the woods um, um and every time that you like squeeze your arm on him you can feel it like bring him out of it yeah uh, and calm him back if i'm feeling more of a launch towards it he's gonna say that's just as dangerous i that's not yes. conquering it it's not controlling it it's trying to push it away and he'll just do unless something else happens that's what he'll do the whole walk Mm hmm um Quedon, uh would notice well I don't I don't know if he's like observing Clovis but if he does he would notice that um Clovis doesn't seem like upset or like afraid at him but he similarly doesn't seem to be acknowledging uh Quedon. like he's like direct and and will like interact with you but he doesn't seem to be like looking to you uh or like trying to check in on you but he doesn't seem to be doing that with anyone right now yeah uh i'm i just wanted to be like in your sphere like i think my like my head is forward i'm i'm not being very verbal but i think i'm trying my goal is to present as like cool calm and collected knowing that you know that i know how forests work mm -hmm. um to like just try to ease like like Galmus is trying to ease your your worries physically. I'm just try I'm just trying to be like a calming presence in the group as well. Um and yeah, I don't think I mean after like a long how how long is this is this walk? I'm figuring out how realistic it is for all of us to be silent. Uh, it's a pretty good walk. It's several hours. Hell yeah. You would have been um, silent. If you're silent the whole walk, you would have been silent for the equivalent of like six or seven hours. Yeah, that's... I don't think that's quite happening, but I do think a couple hours do pass of just like no words really much being said. Um, okay. Ah, uh, you're muted, Galmus. I was thinking to myself <laughs> by moving my lips. <laughs> um, no, uh, if we're walking that long and um, I'd be doing the physical holding of Clovis's arm to kind of steel him against what's going on, but I would also be uh, with Zir on goat wearing the uh, medallion. I would be telling her a story of uh, two little dwarves that delve too deep in the mines and their adventure to get back home, which is fanciful because the kids only were gone for an hour and in their mind they had created a magnificent adventure they went on um, that he was a story he was told when he was a kid. He would be saying it to her, helping to try to move whatever dream she's having back to something more fanciful. All right. Does anybody else want to say anything at any point in this trip? I think after a while of that happening, because since it's just fucking silent, other than uh, Galnus telling that story, I think after a while, uh, maybe when when he gets to like a a low point in the story, um, Clovis will over his shoulders say, "You're a pretty kind-hearted fellow." Galmus. I'm just a guy. I keep telling everyone I'm not a hero. I'm, I'm a blacksmith. And modest, too. No. No, I'm not. I'm a blacksmith who came here with a friend. I'm just what I have to be right now. I believe my friend here was trying to issue you a compliment, so take it. 
Thank you for the compliment that I didn't pick up on. I was essentially just a scribe before I got here. So, not much of a hero either, outside of, I guess, what we need to be right now. now People used to throw trash at me. And now I saved the world. That, well, that, this world. That took a dark turn, but no, <laughs> if, if you can be, be heroes. People need inspiration. If you can, be a hero. That no matter how much trash was thrown at you. <laughs> which is disheartening and kind of disappointing. And I'm yeah, sorry. No, it, yeah. No, it's it look. I just <laughs> feel so bad for okay. you right now. Okay, out of character. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will say oh, that God. the part I said about I feel so bad for you right now. That was in character. Yes. I, yeah, no, no, I know. I just had to laugh. You could be it. heroes. People used to throw trash at me. That sucks. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> I think, well, I, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't, yeah, that, I, I think I find that word as equally as pretentious as you might, Galnus. I, I don't identify by the term hero by any means. I think we're all just doing what it takes doing what we have to, but not everybody's have to is as caring as yours. People need support. Some people also need a nice swift kick in the ass, but at this moment, You're tough. she needs a kind word. You're I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure I'll give her a swift kick in the ass. I grew up with lots of heroes. There are so many really? people. In, uh, I mean, my father was my first hero. Um, but uh, in the church, and, and when I moved to tennis in the city at large, there were lots of people that inspired me to be better. And eventually, especially now, after going through all of this, uh, I've begun to realize that they're all just people too. Hmm. But uh, to the people who need them to be, they are heroes. Heroes are greater than people. I came here with heroes. Uh, I think um, seeming a little more calmed down by the fact that people have started uh, talking uh, Clovis will reach up his hand that uh, Galnus has been sort of steadying him on uh, and put it on Galnus's shoulder and say, if we can, let's be heroes. All of us. Nah, I'm happier being a guy. I can tell your stories one day. Maybe. That's what it means to you. Heroes don't tell the stories of other heroes tell stories of themselves. I'd rather tell the stories of other people. And I'll just let the smile fall from my face and put my hand back on goat and start keep looking after Zir. I will allow my hand to touch her and I'll push my last two points of uh, uh, what's it called? Um, wow, I forgot it. That's, I'm a terrible yeah. hero if I was one. Mm -hmm. uh, my last two points of lay on hands, and I'll push yes. them into her. Gotcha. All right. Noted. Well, I'm very impressed by all of you. Heck, I think I, a year ago, would be impressed by me now. So... We don't know what kind of heroes we are, then let's just try to save those we can and hopefully save each other along the way. Let's just do our best. Um, while we're talking about our best, um, out of character, what is Bozrek doing during this? I think you're muted, Bozrek. I am. 
Um, he actually is is taking the lead, kind of forging the trail, and very pointedly not associating with anybody. Um, then I will uh, just motion with my uh, cigar. Just what's uh, what's wrong with him? Remember how he told us that he was uh, that he had had an experience with uh, drowning in the past. Okay. I think uh, when when there was that water coming out, well, I you probably could the water see part. Um, at one point, Lisabeth uh, was in his mind, I suppose, um, right around the time that uh, we started heading for the door that that Quedon was behind. Um, the, he started sort of convulsing for a moment and water spilled out of his throat. I think she put him back there for a bit. And of course, I'm sure in his nightmare he saw something uh, well, terrible. You and I got off lucky, I think, but uh, Quedon, Bosric, and Zier, she knows a lot. Well, I only got away because nobody knows much about me. Right. She knows a lot about all of them. Well, it's even why even now I'm being very careful about what I say. That's probably wise. And do I sense anyone around us within uh, uh, 60 feet in any direction? Um... You kind of sense sort of her lingering animus for the first four hours of the walk, and then it starts to taper off. Um, so I'll say at around, I guess we're having this conversation around hour five, because if I sense her, I'm not having this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then I will bring it up and be like, I mean, she was with us for the last couple hours. Mm. Why I told a childhood story to dear. She's gone now, by the way. I don't sense anything. I feel a little bit less jumpy now. I wonder if that's related. But, She's um, in gone. any case, that's why, if I had to guess, he's, uh, being the, uh, stoic warrior up there. Is that what that is? Okay. Well, hope he gets over it. I think um, I'll I'll address it later. I want to make sure that he's okay, but but um, I think he might just need a little bit of time to process process things himself first. I will All do right. my best to let you speak. I feel like the only reason I got through that as unscathed as I am now is because well, she tried to haunt me with a nightmare I had every single night for years, so by this point I might just be numb to it. Hmm. Good, and I'm sorry? Oh, no, it worked. I'm here, aren't I? Yes, you are real. Not the question I was asking, but the reassurance is nice. <laughs> Just, um, let's all try to avoid getting, uh, pulled through portals by weird, uh, puppet demons. In my def- No, I'm not gonna defend myself. Never mind. I actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Clovis, because I forgot to tell you, Queen, the thing that grabbed you was basically like just like an eight limbed puppet just wrapped around you. Okay. It was, was awful. Gonna be like, that's like it. I was going to be like, in my defense, and then I realized that I didn't know, but then I just in character <laughs> dismissed it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Queen, 
Clovis, if I if I could have avoided that, I really I really would have tried. I I Well, did that wasn't try as a matter of that fact. wasn't a dig at you. I just Yeah. we should we probably we should all not let that happen as much as we can Yeah, going yeah. forward because it was the consequences were truly terrible. Has this Next happened time. to you a lot? No, but I'd like to keep it a one-time thing if Yeah. we can. Just the way you said it, it sounded like this was not the first time. I don't think it's the first time like something like this has happened to them. Go. Uh, Yeah, I start don't talking. know. Mm I don't -hmm. think it's the first time something like this has happened to them, but I think this is a specific thing that was weird. Yes, precisely, Strange Goat. Um, I don't let no it's come on, man. sorry, Other strange adjectives. goat. That's rude. Yeah, that's that's pretty metal. It's called I'll take that. All right, we'll stick with that. Wait, what what did what'd you just call it? Skull goat. Skull. Okay, skull goat. I could call you a skull goat if that's what you want. Uh, you could call me whatever you want, really. I've been calling you goat because you're a goat. That is well spotted, sir. Oh, that's rude. I picked I, up the you made Bernardo. me. Skull goat is germane because not only are you a goat, but also Jermaine. we can see your skull. Yes. That's a cool name too. Jermaine. Yes. Jermaine? I was good. I thought you were naming him Jermaine. I thought, yeah. I was like, Skull Goat is want Jermaine. to be Jermaine? Heard. Uh, he looks to, he kind of nudges you, Galnus. Okay, yeah, Jermaine's fine. Yeah, I'm Jermaine now. Jermaine the Skull Oh, <laughs> <Hell> yeah. <laughs> Pleased to make your acquaintance, Jermaine. <laughs> You start voicing him like Jermaine Clement from the <laughs> fucking. Uh, I just love this guy. I, I just the flight of the Concords. <laughs> right. Oh man. It's the tried and tested D and D gameplay where the DM gives you a little freak sidekick and everyone instantly loves him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I don't know if I should be playing Galnus or Jermaine. Um, <laughs> Why not both? Mm hmm. Born in it. So I assume we eventually get to this clearing. Yeah, I, I'm going to go. I was going to say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and yeah. push this forward just a bit. Just a bit. Any more emotional morsels we want to squeeze out of ourselves? No. Uh, I think once we get there, I, I set up the tower pretty quick. Hmm. Cool. All right, so the tower is set up. So you guys are in a safe location now. I, I do have to ask, is the, is the forge a safe part of this location, or is this like a, no, you're outside and you're going to die? I mean, you're outside, but it's, like, it's enclosed in as much as a forge can be enclosed. So it is protected, but it is by, because magic, but it is... Yeah. It, it's a forge. You can't have it entirely inside. This isn't the fucking Discovery Channel or whatever, where they do that forged and fire show. And it's oh, God, no, don't get me started. <laughs> I'm not getting started. Um... It probably you probably have like a little access door like right, right the rest next of this to your... session will be me shitting on that show because of the things that frustrate <laughs> me. I cannot see I love that show, but yeah, no, it's not that. <laughs> anyway, back again. Uh yeah, so you guys can uh distribute yourselves as you see fit, but yeah, you are safe, so you can start hashing out any of your safety talks. Keep your arms and legs inside the fortress at all times. Please stay on the moving walkway. Thank you for flying, Stendar Air. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably go out to the forge. Uh... Okay. Hmm. Sounds good. I think after uh, after a while, que uh, that's not my character. Uh, Clovis. <laughs> that's will, not me. Uh, Go find Bosric. Okay. Put your room. 
What's, what's Bosrick doing? Um, he actually went up to the tough lookout part. Mm -hmm. Just looking out. Keep a watch. So far as you can tell. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I think uh, Clovis will watch for a while. Um, and then he'll take his spear and shield um and you'll see him uh if if Bosrick pays any attention uh start to run through the like spear training drills that have been happening um but with a higher focus on uh the shield so rather than focusing on blocking an attack and attacking around it focusing more on uh following up with protection uh with his shield. If you want this space, I can go. Uh, no, actually. Um, I was hoping you might be interested in a spar. I'm not in the mood. Fair enough. Um, I won't press you on anything because I know how damaging those dreams have been for me in the past. Uh, but uh, I didn't have one this time around, so battle strategy-wise, is there um, anything specific that happened? Anything we should watch out for, prepare for? I don't know. It's just a no. That's fine. I don't know that any of us do. All right, band-aid off. <clears throat> There was a moment there, Balsrick, um, where I guess she slipped back into your mind or something, and water started spilling out of your throat. Yeah. I'd like to help you defend against the kinds of things that she does, but if I don't know how she's attacking, I don't know where to put my shield. We'll come back to this, but I have to do something first. And I actually, and boss, I will actually um, head down to Gallus is at the forge, right? Uh, yes, he is. So, um, before he goes in, actually, he will unbolt both his swords and leave them at the door. And he'll, um, uh, mind if I come in for a sec? What would you like? And I'm working on a mold. And, well, and you can see I am melting some of the adamantine. Well, judging from your uh, your tone when I was when I offered to take uh, Zia from you, you were upset at me for leaving my post. I should have communicated better, but. Clovis had a lead on possibly where Queen was. So I made the call to try and get him out so we could all get out. I made I didn't communicate, and that was my bad, and I apologize for that. Are you a leader or not? I don't know the answer. 
answer that question anymore. Which brings me to what I wanted to ask. I'll take a deep breath and just... May I speak to the Mother Hearth? What for? My whole life, the only one who ever had any good advice for me was my mom, and she's not here. So, if I could speak to a mother, maybe it would help. I don't know. I'm dressing in anything right now. You can answer one question for me. All right. When we were in the house, instead of doing what was important, why did you cowardly run towards another task? From my perspective, I wasn't making a cowardly move. I was trying to save our other lost companion. I didn't communicate. That was my error. No. You were weak. You were hurt. And you ran face first into a room of unknown origin in the possibility to die because it was easier than staying back. The harder thing to do would have been to say, someone, go. And stayed in a position where you could defend yourself and another. To do the easy thing is just as cowardly as running away. You can say it was a bad decision, but it could have cost her her life. Quedon was a toy. The lady was having fun with him. My legs are small, but I could have gotten there nonetheless, and I was fine. Just because something's not heroic, something's in your mind, it was brave to go get him, but you could have died. And you is didn't do what was required. Is that what you think I was... It wasn't about bravery. I was trying to help him. You could have yes. helped him better. Maybe you're right. Maybe I made the wrong call. Maybe pain and panic clouded my judgment. You give orders when we're out there. I've heard you do it numerous times. If we can't trust you to make the hard decisions, then you can't lead us. I'm not trying to be mean to you, although I am succeeding beautifully. But I'm trying to make you realize that as a leader, it is cowardly to run from the group. When you can send someone else, you have to assess, you have to see. You don't blindly send yourself or someone away. You make a good decision. You make the one you don't want to. I called out. I said things that should have prompted you to think, which is what Corey would have done to me. You didn't listen and you boldly ran in. With Clovis hot on your tail. Because you might need help. Leaving an unconscious young lady in a room full of mechanical beings that were attacking and eviscerating us. Yes, Queenham was in danger. Zir was in mortal danger. It is brave to not do the thing you want to do. Leadership isn't about running in. And running in first doesn't bring you honor, it brings you death.
This is about honor. Shouldn't it be? As you turn around, like, the mother, the mother is three feet to your, to your. As you turn away, I will say the mother is three feet to your right. Say whatever you wish, and I go back to working the metal. I will say a prayer under my breath. Uh, mother, please give him good guidance. But no, at this point, he's he's you. You have broken it, and you have done it. You have broken the sword. He leaves. He leaves the tower. And sits outside. As he leaves, I'll say to the uh, the forge and the fire, Body would say something. Sometimes for the metal to be made into something better has to be able to take the heat. Um, as you say that and you bring your hammer down um, on the adamantine, you yeah. pull it back and there's a divot in the hammer Yeah. where maybe you've lost focus for a second, you've struck it just a little too hard, Okay. and you hear a voice in your head that says, sometimes, but if you apply too much force to anything, it can snap. You went wrong. I also wasn't right. You put a little too much fuel on the fire. And I will say to the, you weren't wrong, I will say, also wasn't right. And I'll start work towards correcting the issue with the, the, yes. I, the, the thing that I put into it. I think he needed to hear it. And I think he needed to hear it from you. But... He needed to hear it from somebody who could teach him to lead. I'm just, what the hell happened to be the one saying the things that, and then I, instead of hitting the metal, I turn around and I just hit the ground as hard as I can and then kind of get off and start working the metal again. Um, As you go to hit the ground, um, you don't quite make contact because something, you see the animus of something catch the haft of your hammer. Yeah. And very slowly pick it back up and you feel warm arms around you. And then it fades and you go back to the forge. Um as as I go back to it, I'll just say to the forge and the fire, I'll try to do better. And I'll just Everyone can learn something. I'm going to go talk to him though. You've got Adavar. You don't need us both. <laughs> Adavar just kind of chuckles under his breath. <laughs> and, Always and have wanted to work with Adamantine. Before she leaves, I'll be. I'll say, uh, were you able to imbue yourself into this before you before you left, or should I slow my process? I want to make sure that you are represented properly. My mark is there. I know you succeed where I failed. And um, just to clarify, are you attempting to use Mother Hearth Consecration on this hammer? Um, I'm trying to get her to have it. Um, so basically, I want um, Adivar to, because it's, Ad it's Adamantine. Mm -hmm. So I basically want him to put his touch on this, basically making yeah. it as hard and as powerful as possible, but I want her heat radiating through it um, either to enhance it um, or just to make it a uh, kind of like a heat source almost like you can always, whenever it hits something, you may not get fire. I know, I don't know what I'm going to roll because my daughter's going to roll later. Um, <laughs> but, or just to feel just, even when this technically cold metal hits you, you should feel fire you should right. feel heat depending on what your daughter rolls we'll we'll see how much fire damage it does but yeah because you because you specified um you this will be a consecrated weapon consecrated to both out of our and the mother hearth and it will do some level of fire damage okay 
Um, but, yeah. Um, Bosric, as you are sitting, are you just sitting or are you doing anything? No, he's just... He's sitting and looking out and just, he, he has, he's neither of his swords with him. He's just, he, he, he looks like a man who has, who has, he looks like he's broken. Okay. Um. After you've been out there for maybe an hour or so, um you see walking out of the woods um, a tall feminine form with long bright red hair. You wanted a word, warrior. I was mistaken. I'm not worth it. My people ruined your paradise. Uh, at this point, uh, she's going to, like, gently take your shoulder and sort of stand you up. What did you just say? If it wasn't for that ship, there'd be no show time. Um, she kind of stares at you for a minute. And then, as fast as she could, as fast as you can blink, it slaps you across the face. And then she grabs your face and puts it back. That's not what I meant. What did you say to me when I walked up? I was mistaken. I'm not worthy of your time. Who are you, Bosric Cobb, to determine who is worthy of the sight of a god? Did my acolyte's words mean nothing to you? Do you think yourself immune to failure? Do you think leaders are immune to failure? You did not pilot the ship here. You did not kill my sister. You did not split the continents. You are one man. You are a mortal man. You make mistakes like mortal men. Yes, you made a bad call today. You will make bad calls in the future. So will Galnus, so will Quedon, Clovis, and anyone living on this plane for as long as this plane exists. It's but more than... stop. It is not about the hits that take us down. It is not about the hammer blows that bring us to the ground. It is about the strength to stand again. Do you have the strength to stand again? I don't know! I don't know if anything I do here matters! You know, I heard what the thing below said, and what if we were wrong to kill Seltranon? I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not a leader. I don't know anything about this place. I'm just been going along like a block-headed orc with a sword, killing things and getting Bez killed, and... I don't know what to do! I don't know anything about this place! I have never been more lost than I am now. She exhales. And she looks at you very stern-faced. And what are you going to do about it? No. I, I can't stand by and watch as the Duke's heart people, but the thing below... Wait, apparently has to be contained? I, every minute of every day, I find new questions, new doubts. And nothing makes sense here. And I've got these people who look at me like I'm some kind of mythic warrior of all. I'm just a glorified god. Yes. Yes, you are. And I am simply a fire elemental that wandered with my sister into a plane rich with magic. 
and I fought forces you couldn't even imagine. I divided a continent in rage. I split a people. I sundered a world. Was that the right decision? Perhaps not. It is a decision I live with. You chose to act to save a friend. You may have condemned another to death. Was that the right decision? Perhaps not. Quedon is alive because you went into that door. Zira is alive because Galnas picked her up. You can either accept the pain of your past and wallow in it and look only at your failures. Or, and she produces Fangbreaker. You can rise to meet them. Galnus and I forged a sword for you from broken shards. A blind Adam and Tari trusted you with sword making abilities and sword fighting. Your wolfkin friend relied on you. These people rely on you. You may not be a leader. But you are a member of their team. And without you, they will all die. Will you allow that to happen, Bosric Cobb? By wallowing in your misery? Or will you be worthy of the blessings that the Raven laid upon you, that I laid upon you, that Galnus and Clovis and Quedon and yes, even Zeer laid upon you? They don't need you to be a legend, Bosric. They need you to be Bosric. Is that what you are? It's not misery of the past that just troubles me. It's doubt of the future. I don't... I, I wish I knew if we were doing the right thing, if fighting these dukes, if facing the thing below, are we, are we on the right path? Only one way to find out. Forge ahead. Galnus is a stubborn bastard. And sometimes he angers me to no end. But he never lets uncertainty get in his way. If uncertainty is stopping you, you won't get anywhere, whether you're in this place or not. You slew a vampire in single combat. What would your guards think of that? She says with a smile. And then he's, he hasn't touched Fangbreaker yet. He'll, he'll actually will. I suppose for better or worse, I have committed to it. Good. Now, I'm not going to say that my avatar, that Galnus, was wrong. He wasn't. But, as he said to me, it wasn't entirely right either. He said what you needed to hear, but perhaps he could have said it in a different way. But right now, your people need you more than you need to worry about uncertainty. So buck up, and she kind of punches your shoulder, <laughs> and let me see that ferocious orcish fervor. I am so fond of. You know, I'll let doubts overtake me never more.
Yelnus mm -hmm. and Bosric. Take an inspiration for yourselves. For a very well done scene. Is this one going to stay with me for six sessions too? Because I forget. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Um, and with that, I am going to pan the camera into the tower to see if Clefus and Queen want to do anything. Uh, you don't have uh, to. I just, uh, that uh, was a big scene uh, and I want to give you guys the opportunity. Yeah. Um, it was, it was indeed. Goodness. I'm getting all kinds of crazy glare on the webcam today, y'all. I am pale as a yeah, ghost. You are shiny, Queen. I'm real. <laughs> It, will it will getting closer to it help at all? Who this knows? This is a, a rare holographic Queden. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Wow. Pokeball, go! My friend, your eyes. Are you good? What? <laughs> like you're staring oh. into the sun. No, How are you making no it worse? Light. There's no light <laughs> on my face at all. That's <laughs> why. No yeah. Well, I have a lamp next to me. I'm just moving it closer and more far away. You look like God was standing right out of frame. <laughs> you did. You legitimately did. There's there was no glare in my eyes whatsoever. Uh, um, me when the sorry for that. talking to me. <laughs> no, I feel like I I deliver well needed silly breaks after after heavy emotional role play. Um, I really I think that like quit zero is where. Um. I don't know. Where did you guys deposit Zir? She she in, would in technically still be on Goat. I never took her off Goat. Goat's just chilling. Uh, at, at Can we say that we tower, put her somewhere? Yeah, I yes. don't think Clovis would have let her remain on Goat. Um, <laughs> on fair goat. enough. You got on a problem goat. with Goat? Goat's well, not no, but as he a got a spine. Yeah. Yeah, goat has Beds spine. Beds don't have yeah. spines. Unless you got a spineless goat. Spineless goat. I'll take one goat and uh, hold the spine. <laughs> Look, Jermaine no. ain't like that. Can I get boneless goat? Boneless goat. Um, hey, Jimmy, give me a pizza with nothing. <laughs> I not. Nothing? <laughs> not? I love it. <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I guess uh, zero on bed. Okay. So, zero on bed. I would bed. want to. If there's an opportunity to find a time alone with Zir, I think I would do one of those things that you see in the movies where someone's in a coma and the doctor's like, she can't hear you, but you can talk to her if you want. And then, yeah. Um, okay, we'll say you can find a, a moment alone with Zir pretty easily. Yeah, I just, I think, I don't know if I want to like specifically role play out what I say, but I, I think that like the little side conversations that Zir and Queen have been having, like, and I, I know that Zier probably knew, like, what it meant to Queen, but just, like, meant a lot. And, like, um, you know, Zier was a, was a tough nut to crack for Queen, um, as far as, like, how to, how to approach being friends with this person. Um, and I, like, he felt like th they were finally, like, at a, at, at a really good place where they were looking out for each other and, and like appreciated each other's company and felt felt safe around each other um and and now i got um <laughs> and now i forgot to wind up the the jukebox and the puppet <laughs> got me and um <laughs> and and then i came back and zero gone so i wasn't there to see anything i feel like there's some guilt of like if i was there maybe i could have done something um and i just want to just like express my my appreciation and and good uh, good natured vibes okay towards, um where it's getting better go ahead and say what you're gonna say because i think moira might be in the chat and if not moira will definitely watch the vod so oh. zero's well, gonna be able to hear what you say sure I, it was less of a, I don't want to do this because Zir's not here, and more of a just, like, I don't 
have it fully organized in my brain. Okay. Um, but we'll I, do it. We'll do it next session then, when Zir is here. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I can, you know, just. I mean, basically, yeah, basically the bullet points that I just went through. It's just like okay. Oh, okay. I'll 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 think about I, I yeah. can think about something more profound perhaps. Um, okay. Cool. All right, uh, Clovis. Yeah, I have a cool thing that I hadn't thought of before that, but I think I want to try, and I think Clovis would try. Um, All right. Uh, I'm first, nervous. Uh, for my own sake, oh, it's nothing to be nervous about. It's depending on when you heard it. If you were still up at the top, you may have heard. Yeah, that thing that, between that's what I was depending. Gonna ask. Uh, as a, cl I, I wouldn't act on it, but as a clarifying question to know if Clovis knows what happened, uh, was the conversation with the Mother Hearth audible? I doubt the conversation with uh, Galmas was. Um, conversation in the Forge was just, I mean, I'm gonna we say quiet. no, that that was just for Bosric. Gotcha. I just don't know the logistics of like the tower and and like how yeah. how high up I am because I am on the very top. Well, I mean, because Bosrick specified that he, like, went off on his own, I think he yeah. was far enough out of earshot, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think, so, uh, what Clovis was, uh, the sparring that he was, that he went up to go do and was hoping to get Bosrick into, uh, he is, in his mind, trying to run through uh, what Veronica did. Uh, the puppet, the way that it came at him, because it was a style of fighting. He's not familiar very much with fighting at all. But that was a method of attack that nothing they've encountered so far employed. Um, so he really had, like, his shield was basically useless since she could just come out of the shadows. Um, so he was trying to, in his mind, like, imagine her coming at him the way that she did and, like, try and figure out what movements he should have done. And he tries that for a while and gets really frustrated because it's just not working because he can't tell if it would have worked because he's just imagining a fake enemy. Um, so I think he stops um, and is uh, to himself would just be like, oh, Bosric, why does everybody have to be exactly as messed up as I am when I need them to be fine? I need to Wow. <laughs> Need more. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> There's an idea. Uh, hmm. Uh, and he's going to close his eyes, um, hold his hand out, and say, Legion. Forma, and cast Spirit Guardians. All right. Um, as you cast Spirit Guardians, uh, they rotate around you, and then they lock shields in front of you in a line, in a phalanx. Okay. Hmm. Hello? I've never tried. Can you all hear me um for a moment there is nothing and then right when you're about to give up the front uh the one that's right in the middle takes its spear and just <laughs> hmm you all are well i suppose you're aspects of Stendhal, really. Theology aside, you come from me. You fight for me, and you know what I want you to do before I ask you to do it. So somehow, you must see everything that I do. You must know everything that I know. Do you remember that puppet? Real nasty bastard. Remember how she got the best of us? Came at us from all those angles. This time, all four of them. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you all know how to fight better than I do. You certainly seem like you do. 
Um, and I think my friends need time to help themselves in ways that I can't help them. So um, I think I'm on my own right now. Um, why don't we try and learn how to fight? Hmm? There is again another pause and then four spears pointed at your chest. Excellent. <laughs> Legion, take your quarters. Uh, and I will begin sparring with my spirit guardians. Okay. Um, you spar for probably about, like, half an hour. When you hear... Meaty, very slow, but very meaty clapping from somewhere on the top. Okay. Uh, I think um, Clovis has been kind of instructing them to do like what the puppet did, which is essentially like strafing runs, come in, uh, make a strike, hit and run, and get out. Uh, and so I think he blocks a couple more. Um, and in order to uh, get his shield up to one, he sort of like does a half spin around. Uh, and I think he blocks it, finishes the spin, turns around towards whatever, wherever this sound okay. is coming from. There uh, is and notices it for the first time. There is a tall woman um in sort of like a leather breastplate and like a Roman like gladiator skirt. Um and she is like buff and burly. She's got three scars across her face. Um <laughs> And she says, well now, you sure you're not one of mine? You don't fight like a turtle. Uh, sorry, I'm not quite sure <laughs> who you are. She holds her hand up. Fighting against trained soldiers is easy. You hear thunder. And as lightning strikes, she grabs the bolt of lightning and <laughs> pulls an axe out of it and kind of just pops it on her hand. You want to learn how to really fight, son of Stendar? I'm sorry. I suppose I should introduce myself. She uh, flips the axe around it, <laughs> slams it into the ground. I am the current aspect of the god Bolgraf. Lord of Battle, or I guess in this case, Lady of Battle. <clears throat> hey, uh, chat! Who, who here knows his lore enough to be excited about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Clovis will uh, perk up a little bit. All right, then. Show me your tusks. Bullcraft's the bear. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Uh, then, yeah. Uh, all right. It's okay. Clovis would know that. <laughs> Show me your claws. <laughs> she uh, takes the axe and she throws it past you and goes into a running tackle to just kind of shoulder check you. Uh, we're going to do opposed athletics. Good luck. <laughs> um, I, this may not affect the role at all, but I know what Clovis would do in that scenario, okay. and I want to tell you. Um, okay. I think seeing the charge coming at him, uh, and with all of the big, heavy things that we have fought, uh, him warding off blows from uh, like transformed Lady Seltradot, uh, the wolves and things, he's learned by now that his arm is only so strong. Um, and seeing the, like, uh, little holographic Stendar and the way that it, like, diverts the momentum of the pillar when he uses spiritual weapon, he is going to, this probably, this is not going to come on camera, but he's going to duck to a knee, shield up, and try and flip her over rather okay. than trying to, like, catch her charge. He's gonna try um, and do some some like shield Aikido. All right, I will let you add your wisdom to this. 
Okay. Um, you need to beat us thirty. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, but uh, this is athletics. You said. Yeah, she has a plus twelve, and she rolled an eighteen. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did get a twenty. Nice. Um. um yeah. So. Uh, she goes to, like, shoulder check you, and you drop down, and you do kind of lift her off the ground a bit, but then, um, you feel her, you see her set her feet, and you feel her very large arms reach around and grab, uh, the back of your, like, cloak, and, um, she lifts you up into, like, a suplex, and just drops you back down. Not enough to actually do damage, but enough to knock the wind out of you for a second. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, nice, move. And she holds her hand up, and the axe comes spinning back, and she catches it, and there's another, like, peal of thunder. <laughs> Clovis will stand up and, like, <laughs> you too. Uh, she claps you on the shoulder, probably a little too hard, mm -hmm. and says, we're going to be seeing more of each other, you and me. And then she lifts the axe up in the air. There's another peal of thunder. The lightning comes down, strikes the axe, and she vanishes. Okay. Uh, nice to be noticed. All right. <clears throat> Men. Shoulder charge me. Right, just like a football like line. <laughs> That's all I wanted from that scene. Okay. Um, he continues thunder, doing that for, for a while. The thunder rolls for a while. Mm. Um, there's one more thing I want to do. We're going to go back inside uh, to the room with Seer and Quida. Um, Quida, as you are sitting there saying whatever it is you end up saying to Seer, um, you feel a presence that is familiar, but sort of unfamiliar. You have felt the Greystalker. He has become sort of a constant companion for you. You know what it's like when he's nearby, that feeling of dread. But there is a comfort that's sort of layered over that feeling. Yeah. Um, as a probably like young adult um, elf with black hair. It's sort of, you know, simple black robes uh, comes and sits down across from you. Are you all right? Do I know this figure? The... It feels familiar. I'll be honest, the default answer to that in this place is not a concrete yes or no. But I'm breathing. I made it out of that peaceful place. It was... Let's call it a whisper of my past, but not a scream. I understand. This place is <sighs> anathema to me as well. I don't like a place that is robbed of my blessing. And I'm sorry I haven't come to you in person before. I shouldn't keep sending avatars. I wouldn't want I, you to I... think I didn't care. I fucking bow immediately. He, um, comes over, please. No. Never to me. Why here? Why now? Because for the first time I can. I think for the first time you are letting me. You're understanding that I never wanted to curse you. I'm trying to give you a gift. 
And I think for so long you thought you took something from Vars, that we took something from Vars, but you gave him peace. He is at peace, Quedon. He's with me. Yes. Would you like to see him? Not in the way that the creatures here would show him to you. My power is not strong here. There is something that dampens all the gods. We can influence a little, but not much. But I can... I can give you that. And he holds you know. his hand out to you. In all honesty, I... I think it will bring you peace to see what I'm talking about. I have feared closure for so long. You know that well, not every death is afforded such closure. No. And I don't make it to all of them. But I was there for Vars. My Sugari did love him so much. As did I. I know. That's why I'm not angry with what you did. Poor decisions born of love are not sins. They're just decisions. Penance must be paid, but I was never angry with you. I wouldn't let myself even fully believe in in you, in your power at first. I did view it as a punishment. Taking you... too many wrong steps. If I counted the number of mortals that viewed me as a punishment or something to be feared, I would outnumber the stars in the sky, Quedon. So what are you offering? Final goodbye? I'm offering peace. I'm offering you the chance to... Allow your hearts to move forward. Open yourself to... Your comrades. To the blessings I try to provide you. To the wonder that is the life of Queden Zinosk. I take a deep inhale and I take the hand. All right. Uh, he holding your hand. Uh, you see for the first time in his long black hair, there are like shimmers of silver. And as he takes you outside, uh, the sky is clouded over and he closes his eyes and you can feel him kind of tighten his hand on your grip and you can tell this takes effort. But he holds up his hand and he clears the clouds and you see a beautiful night sky. All of you see a beautiful night sky laden with stars. And he points and you see one shining. He says, that's Vars. Like I said, my Sugari loved him so much, we just couldn't let him go. So we put him in the sky. That is the afterlife of the unclaimed. Look at you now. Shining brighter than even you ever wanted. But how bright you deserve. 
you hear an exhale of breath, the clouds push back over, and um, Zarakas, who I will now say the name of, kind of hit, takes a knee next to you. Thank you. This place fights me even now. Yes. Death has no power here. I never even considered with how backwards the rules of this land are, how that must be affecting you. Well, know that, well, you know I, I fight in your name, and I think that, well, I think I am okay. I think that years of servitude in practice is, is 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 one thing, but I think I think these people, I think these this place it, I think I'm doing well by you. Or I am trying to. Thank you. He just nods and um, walks into the woods. And you feel the essence vanish. Why is it always elves? And now I'm going to cut back to Galnus. Uh, Galnus Adivar is helping you uh, with this hammer, and you can see like the mark of the Mother Hearth on the head of the hammer. And whenever he strikes, you can see the shape of that ram's head coming in. So, I want to tell you, it's <clears throat> this is not a reproduction of his current hammer. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost because um, he does use it for forging. Um, if you remember, you're a comic book guy, I assume. So it's kind of um, like Stormbreaker, but with a longer handle, but not as like bulbousy and curvy. It's still very uh -huh. blocky, um, except where it comes into that axe head on the other side. Okay. Um, and it is beautifully shaped. Um, like the weight is perfect because of the adamant. And Adabar says, all right, uh, just one more thing. And of course, being the blind person that he is, he sort of just reaches down and he pulls out a small hammer of his own and he just boom. And it sends out this tone that only you can hear of just like a perfect uh, rhythm. And you can see the symbol of Adavar on the axe. And he says... All it needs now is a hand to wield it. Should I get the child? I was going to say, can we have our uh, special guest, please? Sweetie. <laughs> okay. Um, where's my... No, no, you don't have to crawl. You can get up. There's no... <laughs> I just... Yeah, they can see you. It's okay. There's Playing out of our tonight is Galus's daughter. <laughs> okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to roll the die. Okay, and then you're going to tell them what you... Okay, that's all you gotta do. Go. I rolled a kraken, daddy. <laughs> she rolled a kraken, daddy. So that's a twenty, right? <laughs> that's that's the twenties. See, counts up. I'm sorry. This is a teaching moment. I, I no, want her to play okay. the game. Hold on a moment. So hold that could not have gone more perfectly. So no, I know. So so look. All the numbers are on here, okay? And then this is the symbol. I have to find it again. There it is. And then that's because the, that's the company that made the die, but that's the 20. That's the best you can roll. So you rolled the best you could roll. Good so, job. High five. Good job. Kiss. Make sure she doesn't leave until she hears what happens. Oh, oh, you, you got to... Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, love, can you bring up the stream on your phone really quick? Because if I unplug this because I'm recording, it is going to blow out the speakers. Oh, no. Because <laughs> they, they, they want, here's, here's the die, and they want, 
You can roll too, Alistair. <laughs> no, no, roll here. Where are you going, my dice? <laughs> I mean, there are two gods working on it. Oh. Okay. So, Liliana, it's it's got the commercial. Okay, roll the die. Glad the girl rolled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can roll the next thing I make, okay, buddy? Okay, he's very excited that the next thing I, I make in-game, he will roll the dice for. Great. Okay, uh, you can now, she can hear, you can tell uh, what happens to the... All right, so... Uh, Liliana, with your roll, uh, the axe is now a plus two magical weapon. It deals an additional 1d8 fire damage. And it crits on a 17 or higher. Are you... Dennis! <laughs> what? You roll all my dice! <laughs> That's a good hammer. Oh, that's, that's a, a good That's a nat 20. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta honor the 20. Like you... <laughs> more than one nail with that. I'm never, like, this kid is rolling everything from now <laughs> until she rolled shit, and I'm like, get away. No. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. I love and you. And I realize I'm going to regret giving that to you, but it's okay. She came back, it's... she's like, hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very nicely done. <laughs> this one's flat cause it's a... guys I gotta finish though I love you both alright and with that everyone has had <laughs> everyone has had their interactions with the gods everyone is at a resting moment and I don't want to go too much further without Zir so I think that is a good place for us to wrap for this week <laughs>